So I've got a third generation Honda CRV that's got excessive camber and um, basically all of them are like this. The, the control arm is basically too short and the rear wheels can't be adjusted uh, camber wise to straighten out those uh, those wheels. We've got a 17 millimeter crescent wrench, uh, 20 millimeter, but this isn't really specific to size. I just used it to get some leverage on the 17. Um, I've got the one inch here that was compatible with uh, the central adjustment bar on my uh, on my new control arm. Um, I've got an adjustable crescent wrench here just in case. Um, a decent size breaker bar with a half inch on there. Um, I've got a half inch uh, torque wrench for the wheel lug nuts. Uh, lug nuts on these, uh, on this guy is 80 foot pounds. Uh, again, that's 80 foot pounds. And I've got a smaller 3 8 inch um, right here. Uh, torque wrench for torquing down the screws that hold the control arm in place. Uh, just a standard 3 8 ratchet. Um, got a 17 millimeter socket, uh, just standard size socket. And then I've got a couple of deep neck sockets here, a 19, an 18, and a 17. Also uh, a pair of needle nose pliers or something to get that little, uh, that sensor out of the bracket. Uh, a hammer, just in case you need to uh, put a little pressure on uh, those bolts to get them out. Uh, again, you're not hammering directly on the bolt. Uh, you're gonna be using uh, a crescent wrench on the inside of the bolt head and just kind of tapping on the actual wrench itself to get it out. And then a little bit of liquid wrench or something to break free, something to get the uh, get those screws loose. Um, so I purchased an AC Delco. Um, you can kind of see the part number there. Um, this is the professional series. So it's a higher quality adjustable arm. So this is what you, this is what you need the factory uh, control arm is not adjustable. It comes with a nut because the factory control arm, if the nut is actually welded into the uh, into the part. So uh, before you raise your car, you're gonna wanna take a 19 millimeter with a breaker bar and go ahead and pop off your, uh, get your lug nuts loosened open. Now go ahead and just remove the rest of the lug nuts. Pop that, that wheel off. Now you can see right here, this is the control arm that we need to remove. And we also need to remove this, uh, I believe this is the ABS sensor. So we need to get, go ahead and pop this little bracket off. And then we need to remove these bolts right here. So I'm just using like a little pair of needle nose pliers to kind of push down on one side and then come in from the bottom. that puppy off. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit this with a little bit of uh, silicone spray uh, liquid wrench just to kind of get them loosened up. Um, you want to definitely cover your rotor, your brake pads to avoid any spillage. with this fully encased rear end so it doesn't strip. Put that on there and then I'm just going to use another one to give me some leverage here. And I'm just going to lift just to get that to break free a little bit. Now we're going to use our same 17 break loose. Plenty of room for a ratchet, so we can go ahead and ratchet that off. Now, you may need to put a crescent wrench in here so you can put a little bit of outward pressure on it while you're ratcheting. Now, this is going to be a little tricky to get out. It helps if you put a little bit of pressure from underneath with your jack. And just use your uh, just use your crescent wrench. So it's almost all the way out. It's a little tricky getting it out. It's pretty tight. There it goes. That's okay. You want to hang on to that. Once uh, your control arm drops, go ahead and continue with the removal 
that rear bolt. All right, so once you get that, that bolt out, that upper control arm will just pop right out. Just remember that the little bracket attachment goes towards the front of the vehicle. All right, one of the first things we want to do is we want to unscrew both sides of our new control arm. We want to put some uh, anti-seize all along all these threads. Now remember, one side is going to be a backwards thread. It's reverse threaded. The other side is standard. So make sure you remember which side you're going, coming out of, um, so you don't run the risk of cross-threading. Now remember, when you're threading these in, you want about roughly the same amount of space on both sides. Now, since you're going to have to go to the alignment shop, most likely, and do the alignment professionally, um, I would recommend just lining up the length to the old um, to the old one and just simply have the alignment shop do the adjustment. They might have to lengthen it out maybe a half an inch or so. So just put your bolt, uh, your old bolt in, line up the, the bottom half right there, and then just uh, make your adjustments uh, accordingly. All right, so now we're all nice and lined up here, both sides. It's looking good. We're going to keep this over on this side here and uh, we can go ahead and tighten these guys down. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use an adjustable crescent wrench on this, just get this guy kind of tight. I'm not gonna go too tight until after we get it on there. Go ahead and put a little anti-seize on the threads of these. All right, so here we placed our, our new control arm in place. Just like this, we got the little bracket attachment right there facing the front of the vehicle. We're going to go ahead and uh, get these screws threaded in. We're going to do the back first since that one's kind of a pain. We don't want it under tension while we're doing that. So you can see here, we got that threaded most of the way in. Okay, we're going to wait and do the final tightening at the end once uh, everything's put together. We'll place the jack underneath here. Now we're going to want to go ahead and raise this up until it aligns right here with the holes. So once we're pretty well lined up, we're going to want to come in here and put that, that same factory bolt in. And we're going to want to use the included nut that came with it. Now what we want to do is we're going to tighten the outer part of the arm and the inner part of the arm, nice and snug. Now the manual is calling for 69 foot-pounds of torque on these. Now, I don't think I'm going to be able to get my torque wrench in there, so I'm just going to have to guess on that one. But that's quite a bit of foot-pounds, so just make sure it's on nice and tight. There it is. All right, so finally, what I'm using here is a one inch for this specific, uh, for this main central shaft to kind of hold it in place. And then I'm just using my adjustable to get in there and kind of uh, take care of these, these tightened down uh, nuts. So, and I unfortunately do not have a torque spec for these. I'm just gonna tighten them up nice and snug because they're pretty thick, um, steel on steel. So should be good to just uh, crank them down. All right, once those two are tight, I'm gonna go ahead and pop my my sensor back into position right there and just make sure that there's no play going on there. Uh, this guy should not be able to move at all. And then we're going to go ahead and do the other side. The other side is the exact same thing, just the basically mirror opposite. 